Give it morning, holy brothers. Thank you so much for joining us on our pathway to peace. Inside the Garden of Peace, if you're following along, we're on page 63 on the bottom. And today's lesson is called Lose Worthy Lists. Here we go. Just chuck a man. Know what's important, and the rest will fall in line. Not necessarily talking about you. I come up with these topics. Because the, you look ahead to see what's going on here. Okay. The needless lists. The principle of first place priority, top in the world. Nothing comes above or is more important than your wife, right? The entire thing encompasses one's your whole life with a wife as the following example will provide. Here we go with the show. A quarreling young couple came to a rabbi and he said to me they wanted to bridge and bring together all the separation that they had, all the disagreements. So the wife came prepared with a literal list. Today might be on your iPhone, but she wrote these down on a piece of paper. Everything that was wrong with her husband. I'm surprised you even sit on that. Yeah, I was going to say, <laughs> one paper, that's it. A, a, long, a filing cabinet. There. <laughs> a long list of complaints that she had about her husband. Written down on a piece of folio paper. Her first complaint, number one, at the top of the list, was written down that whenever she needs her husband to come home at a certain time because she wants to help with the kids or because she needs to go out and do some shopping, whatever it might be, like 5 o'clock on the dot, she said, please be home by this time to enable her to attend a lecture, to go to an exercise class, visit the gym, whatever it might be, was important to her. He was always, not once in a while, but chronically, consistently, always late. Doesn't matter what it was. And we all know people like this. But when it comes to a wife, what is he saying to her when he's doing that? My needs, my wants, my schedule is obviously more important than yours. Because if there was a Super Bowl, I guarantee you he would be coming early to that game. Despite his promises to come home on time, yes, honey, no problem, I'll be there. He never actually does in practice. So, while the husband was there, he say, dude, what is going on? You tell your wife, you know it's important to her. Why are you not coming home when she wants you to? Why are you not coming home when you say that you're going to be there? He answered, Rabbi, believe me, I promise you I'm not wasting any time in my life. Whatever I do, my overtime at work, is literally for the benefit of my wife and my kids. She wants to have money to go shopping. Who do you think is the one that provides it for her? When she get a bigger paycheck, of course she's the first one with a smile on her face because she's getting what she wants. I'm doing it literally for her. Would I come home late without a good reason? You think I would just do that to bother her, to annoy her, to argue with her? What can I do? Urgent situations come up that need my attention. Deals happen at work that I can't always plan. People show up and call me because they want an extra cabinet. And what am I supposed to say? No, I can't do the business now. I'm sorry, I'm clocking out for the day. What should I do? I'm, I'm doing good. I'm not doing bad. So, Rabbi turned to him and said, You know what? You're right. No! He said, You're dead wrong in the water. Your wife needs to be your number one first priority in life. Yeah, okay, the business is going to be for a benefit, and you know you're doing it, and she's going to enjoy it later. But right now, you cannot be successful in life if she is not going to be happy. If she tells you, hey, sweetheart, the garbage needs to be taken out right now. And as you're walking down the steps, she said, oh my gosh, why are there dirty dishes sitting in the sink? You know what happens? It's called a shift in priority. Of course she wants you to take out the garbage. But if you say to her out of your mouth, hey, honey, I can't do the dishes right now because you literally just told me to take out the garbage. You're already starting a fight. You're already bringing animosity into the home and you're bringing down the level of peace and you're going to create a lots of arguments in your face. 
Of course it's for her. We're not saying it's not for her. But focus on the level of importance where things lie on that ladder. Her needs come before anybody else's, even before her own needs. How crazy is that? Of course it's for her. I'm doing this for you. You wouldn't you distract me from everything else I'm trying to do? It's like you got ADD, what's going on? My wife sends me downstairs to pick up some french fries from the freezer, and on my way down, I'm like, oh my gosh, I forgot to put the load of laundry in. And as I'm going there, oh my gosh, the, the bathroom is missing, missing tissues, and I forgot to reset my room from the work. And by the time I get back upstairs, I literally walk back up, and I forgot what the heck I went down for. In the first place! She's like, I sent you down for the french fries! Where? I'm like, oh my gosh. So next time I say, you know what? I'm doing French fries number one. And on my way, if I see something, I'll make a mental note or write it down to go back and do it. After I got the French fries, because she's waiting upstairs to put them into the oven. So yes, you're doing things that are helpful for her, but not at the expense of what she wants and what she wants right here and now. You got it? Therefore, you have to put a limit on your overtime. You have to say, hey, I need to be out of the house by X time. I need to stop seeing patients by this certain time. I need to cut off my clients because right now this is what she wants. And if you're working extra hours because of your debts, you have limits to this also. The way to invoke God's divine assistance, His help, His monetary gain in escaping all your problems and all the debts that you have and whatever difficulties financially is literally just make your wife happy. Hashem is in control of every dollar that is brought down and goes into your pocket or your bank account. He has something to say. I think you're 100% right. But I think we should... But! No, no, but Here's the big but. Do your favor. Do your favor. Be dollar smart and don't be penny smart and dollar foolish. If you can see what's the real issue that your wife has, okay? And see, let's say she needs help with the kids, help with showering the kids. And you as a guy anyway, you're going to shower their head. You're going to end up showering their feet instead because you're not a, a, a mother, bottom line. So get somebody for $14, $15 an hour. Let them help your wife for a few hours and stay at work and make an extra $500 or $10,000. does not matter. But get, don't be smart to leave work early. Have your customers waiting for you. Have everybody like this. And then you're coming home and she's still not happy because you have two left hands. Rather that, get her the maid that she wants and then she'll be super happy. And then you can really, if that doesn't work, then you go and leave work, whatever it is. But I'm telling you, and I don't want to say from experience or not, mm-hmm. because we're on the live over here. But the reality is, is really try, don't try to just be there and try to fix the problems. You might not be the solution. Because you're not a person that can help do the dishes, you can't help wash the floor, you can't have the, You can try to, but who says the results are great? You better get somebody that can assist. Like, why would you go home and go and do your account, do your accounting? Just get an accountant. Understand? Yes. Mm-hmm. So you have a very good point. I want to tweak it a little bit. Yes, if that's what she wants. If she wants you, then you. If she wants the maid, then get the maid. My wife, if I hired somebody to be there to do the dishes fold the laundry, she would smack me in the back of the head with a spatula. She would say, why the heck are you wasting money when you could be doing something yourself? I say, because if I hire somebody, I could be making more money at my job. But she doesn't want to, it's not, it's, it's girl math sometimes. It doesn't make sense. But in their mind, if they think it's a certain way, or they like it that way, you have to know your wife. I love what he wants to say. You have to know her. <laughs> His eyes look What's going to make her the happiest? Obviously, if she would like somebody to help out and you make more money, a billion percent, go ahead and do it. Of course, don't be at home if you can be making more money if that's what she likes and that's what she loves. And guess what? If a wife likes to work or she enjoys a job, don't tell her, no, you're not allowed to work because I'm the man of the house and I have to bring in the money because that's going to upset her too. Uh, Yes or no? Yeah, 100%. 100%. 100%. right. So if you know a situation that can make your wife be the happiest woman in the world, do it, go for it, spend on it, buy her flowers, buy her diamonds, absolutely, before she even asks for it. But if she's gonna throw flowers in the garbage and say you're a schmageggy for buying it in the first place, don't do it because, oh, this guy told me that I should do things that are gonna make women happy and that's what women want, 
So we should do that. Every woman is different. Yes. Every woman is different. Yes. Just like hundred uh, percent. I want to give an example because a woman is a woman. Bottom line, but every woman is different, and every person, the more he's married to his wife, he should see what makes her more happy. Hopefully, yes. Because also a woman, the thing about it, a woman has somewhat respect her husband. And she doesn't want him to go make him now the maid or make him Cinderella. Oh, go take the laundry out. Go, like, she needs help. She would ask for assistance. But to go plow him with the to-do list, it's also she feels like, okay, I, he has his job. I have my job. Now he's doing both jobs. So what, what kind of help is that? But if she knows for 50 bucks a day, you can get her somebody that she now can be their boss. And she can tell her, if she loves that, a thousand percent. And I'm saying every woman is different. Yes. His wife might not. His so what does it mean has. making your wife the first priority? It means it's first finding of all, out what she needs. It's knowing that she wants and needs and doing that above what you think you want for yourself. That's all. That's what we're saying. Exactly. I had a chidush last night. Sure. I thought you want me to talk about chidush. <laughs> Go ahead. When you have a rabbi, let's say, come to your house, right? Not only do you get up when he gets up every second, not only do you pick up his plate, not only that you're like like on eggshells, like what can I get you, you dress, everything this is, I think we should be for our wives 10 times kind of like that. Because the, when, you, when, you have, when you have somebody that you respect so much, you go way above even your natural being to just even think about it. Even when you come, come to the driver, even comes to talk to you right away, you're like, yes, yes. Right, right. You're 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 out of your nature. Absolutely. So when your wife, the second you don't expect, not only don't ex- just not expect, like ah, I don't expect nothing from her, but have that like that that eyes of like I don't expect nothing from you because you're nothing, not like that. Right. But not expect nothing from her to say, you know what, you're a hundred levels more above and beyond me. Mm-hmm. Then you, the wife, all of a sudden has this different vibe and different energy. It's like when you have a customer that spends. Um, five hundred thousand a, a year. A big well. A uh, five hundred thousand a year. So we call comes up. You're like, oh my god, welcome. Nah, nah. Or oh, the guy that even if you order the tissue box, oh, why is it crooked? Why is it this? So you're like this guy again. So at the end of the day, you, you when you text your wife, you have to. It's again. It's not. It's Treat like this like guy. Um, picking up a thousand pounds. You can't pick up. A, a thousand pounds overnight. You have to pick up pound by pound and get your weight your weight straight. And it's like uh, build your muscles. Like I said, you can have no comments and no criticism. Oh, well said. But that's the that's the key. I think the, the second you look at your wife like a rabbi, then right away you're gonna look at her differently. Because if you look at her like oh, you would she's never my think to argue with somebody. She's my partner. She's my this with the rabbi. Not only you look like this, you pick up his plate. You buy my liyah. You do this. You do that. Beautiful. Uh, God willing, you treat your wife like that every day. Oh, man. It doesn't, it's, uh, it's hard work. But. It's very hard work. Absolutely. It's making her wants. You run to do it like lightning. Exactly. Jack in the box. Spring is ready at every moment to go. So, the rabbi said to him, all your problems are literally because your wife is not your highest priority. No, that. You're not running to do for her. Being ready at every moment for her instead of thinking about yourself. Think about what can I do for her? What can I do for the biggest rabbi that walked into my home? The president of the United States or the biggest guy that you emulate, whatever your highest role model in life could be. Imagine they have an appointment to come to your house. The biggest rabbi coming over. What is the chus? What an honor. What would you do? How would you prepare the house? What would you do to get the kids ready, you know? That's how, if you had that mentality... Just like I said, for your wife, forget about it. It would be bliss. You have to repeat it. You have to repeat it on a constant basis. Like when you wake up in the morning, I do this every day, but you have to wake up in the morning and says, thank you for being your slave. <laughs> because if you don't have the mentality of like, uh, when you're a general, you can be the highest general, but you're still under somebody. You still got to take orders. You can have a hundred ranks, but you still got to take orders. And if you're in the Russian army, if you don't take one order, that's it. You're hanged. They're done. So... We have to wake up in the morning and have to say, Hashem, thank you very much for being your slave. Thank you for the opportunity, for the opportunity to, be to be able to serve. Slave. And if you want to even add a little bit more spices on it, thank you for being a general in your army. <laughs> because you're still on a high rank, but you still have to take orders. And you, when you have that, your wife is also a higher ranking than you. You better know that. Understand it. Remember it. Up until now, you let everything else that you were doing come before her. Now she must assume the first 
top place in your life. So, Rabbi explained this to the husband, that his chronic lateness was because there were other things in his mind that were more important at that moment than what she was asking him for. Because if he really cared about her needs, he would come home on time, he would come home earlier than on time, and especially when she asked him that she had an appointment that meant so much to her. And coming home on time so that she could attend whatever her favorite thing was, if it was a total lecture, it wasn't enough. He should do it willingly, and he should do it with a smile, he should do it with enthusiasm, with love, with running, and showing her how important it is to him that it's important to her. We'll continue with this, God willing, tomorrow, continue in the story, and pick up with understanding what we need to do, how to act, and to show what real love actually means. And with that, have an awesome day, Jisley! Amazing rest of your day! Thank you.